down, sir. Reverse, hurry up. Yes, sir. Use my gun, sir. 904, 904, code 2, code 2, Marina Drive. shot, sir. Right in the tire. I was aiming for the windshield. There's just one thing I've got to know, sir. How'd you know it was the Mullaney brothers? Well, the important thing is we caught them. Oh, no, sir. The important thing is that you made my weekend. The chief said that if we cracked this case, I was invited to his houseboat. Two days in the sun. Closed eyes, open beer, and you're welcome too, sir. No, I've got something far more exciting to do. Saturday brunch at my mother-in-law's. I think it's very sweet of my mother to have us over to brunch today. It's very sweet of your mother to have us over for brunch today. What? Why are you acting this way? What way? As though you had to go to the dentist. Every time you have a dental appointment, you get that look on your face. And don't ask me what look. You know what look. As if I'd rather be going any place exactly. else. Exactly. Any place, that is, except to my mother-in-law's for Saturday brunch. You like my mother. I adore your mother. Everybody knows I only married you to be next to your mother. She's a warm, charming, delightful woman, and I love her desperately. But she's the world's worst cook. If she weren't my mother-in-law, I'd have her arrested for what she does in the kitchen. She could get one to ten just for a tuna fish. You're exaggerating. <laughs> mm. 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 You still got it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Imagine an old married lady like me and I still hear bells when you kiss me. <laughs> What's even more amazing? I hear bells when he kisses you. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey, Mom. Hi. Come on in. You're just in time. I just took the muffins out of the oven. And it's such a lovely day, I thought we'd eat off the terrace. Oh, what a nice idea. It'll be like a picnic. And if I even the ants don't show up. You want a bet? Did you say something? Oh, Mother, it was nothing important. It was just Mac making another one of his indecent propositions. Man's terribly oversexed. How delightful. <laughs> How about we have a toast? May we all be in heaven 30 minutes before the devil knows we're dead. Skull. He was mud in your eye. I thought it was a wonderful toast. Enright taught it to me. It's Irish. Mm. He taught me a curse. You want to hear it? It's a corker. What's well, a brunch without a curse? May you die and be reincarnated as a chandelier. A chandelier? Hang by day and burn by night. <laughs> That's Irish. Jewish. Oh. Enright gets around. Thanks, Father. <laughs> I know you love all that curse hand. I heard that, Mac. You haven't even given my eggs a chance. Uh, that makes both of us. I don't like them. I put in something new. <laughs> the shelves. Doesn't everyone? <laughs> ah, my favorite. Shoelaces and eggs. Half right. Try again. Okay, shoelaces and uh, I give up. Shall we? Must we? raised him properly. It wasn't easy. Time was you couldn't take him anyway. It must have been terrible for you, dear. How is it that all women have the capacity for making a full-grown, mature male feel as though he's only eight and a half years old? Oh, did you see? We got our pictures in the Daily Post at the charity ball. It looks like I have a double chin. Nonsense. It's just a shadow. Doesn't Mac look nice in his tuxedo? Mm -hmm. Oh, I almost forgot. The editorial's about Mac. What does it say? They were commending Mac for a speech the other night at the Chamber of Commerce. Something about, um... Uh, no, thank you. Cracking down on police corruption. What police corruption? Leave it to the Daily Post. It came to my attention that off-duty cops never get traffic tickets, and I'm against that kind of favoritism. I don't care who it is behind the wheel, a moving violation is a moving violation. If anything, we've got to be tougher on ourselves and each other because we're supposed to be setting an example. Thank you very much. Bravo. Oh, I'm sorry. Don't be loved it. Well, it had nothing to do with police corruption. The Post just burns me up. Who's that? Oh, excuse me. Uh, 
really is pretty awful, isn't it? If the chickens knew about your mother, they wouldn't even bother laying the things. I didn't know that Betty Crocker married Attila the Hunt, <laughs> did you? Oh, Francesca, that's no, awful. Do, do, do. I'm just beside myself, oh, Emily. Of course you are. Oh, John, I will you know. know. Wait. Uh, this is my friend Francesca Fairborn. She lives downstairs in 9A. It seems Francesca's dog has been kidnapped. Kidnapped? Dognapped? Is that a word? Uh, how do you know your dog just didn't get lost? I mean, if you check with the pound. I don't need to. I received a ransom note. That's why I brought my troubles to my friend, Emily, here. I don't keep that kind of money in the apartment. Francesca, this is my daughter, Sally, and her husband, Stuart McMillan. Yes, yes. How much are they asking? A hundred. Yeah, it's become a real problem. A lot of drug addicts have been stealing dogs and then selling them back for a hundred, two hundred dollars. A hundred thousand dollars. A hundred thousand dollars? For a dog? Not just a dog. It is the Princess Anastasia. But well, even the Queen of England doesn't have a lineage like hers. A hundred thousand dollars. Can you describe her? Oh, she... Her breed is Pekingese. Her coat is cinnamon with just a touch of fawn. You mean brown? It has the luster of silk. Oh, and the way she walked. So dainty. So a true princess. Well, from your description, Mrs. Fairborn, I'm sorry, but all I seem to be able to understand is unless you really knew your dog, why, it would look pretty much like your everyday uh, cinnamon Pekingese. Perhaps it would help if I described my husband, mm -hmm. George. He is six feet tall. He has uh, curly hair and uh, blue eyes. Uh, well, you've lost me. I mean, why would it help us find your dog if we knew what your husband looked like? Oh, they took him, too. Don't call the police. You'll hear from us soon. When did you receive this? I found it in my mailbox, shortly before I went up to Emily's. How long has Mr. Fairborn been missing? Well, George was taking Anastasia to see Dr. Carmichael for a checkup this morning. But actually, the last time I saw either of them was about 8 o'clock last night. But I wasn't feeling well, and I, I took a sleeping powder. Anastasia. Uh, Mrs. Fairborn, about your husband. Come. Where did I put... Oh, yes. Oh. Here is the princess. And I have others, too. What a lovely bed you have here. We enjoy it. Oh, the poor sensitive darling. I know she won't sleep a wink till I get her home again. Mrs. Fairborn, you don't seem to realize that your husband's life is in danger. Here is a picture of the princess when she is just three months old. Would you by any chance have a photograph of... <laughs> is it? <coughs> Lying around. Of whom? Your husband. Oh, of course not. Not. Well, now, wait just a moment. 
I think I may have one in the living room. Please, might we adjourn? I would like to adjourn. I don't want the princess to return to a germ-laden boudoir. She is so susceptible, please. Do come. <coughs> Do hurry, please. <coughs> there he is. Oh, holding Anastasia. It has been a great comfort for me to share the princess at this time of anguish. It's almost like having her here with me. Thank you, Mrs. Mackenzie. Thank you, Mr. Mackenzie. The name, Mrs. Fairborn, is not Mackenzie, it's Macmillan. Stuart Macmillan. Oh, nice. I'm the commissioner of police. Police? Ah, oh, well, I assume you will treat this matter with confidence. Oh, well, it is a police matter, you understand. You are in my home because you are Emily's son-in-law. You are privy to certain confidences because of that relationship. Not because you are police commissar. Uh, commissioner. Whatever. Not being a member of the criminal element, it is of no interest to me who is on the police force. Good day. A kidnapping, Mrs. Fairborn, is police business. Now, if you don't mind, I would like to take this ransom note down to police headquarters for laboratory analysis. I most certainly do mind. I can assure you that the police will do nothing to interfere with... The police are already interfering. Now, if you will excuse me. Where are we going? See, Yankel, I hate to ruin this weekend. Watch your fingers. Ah. Why? This isn't my day. Why? Why isn't it my day, or why do I hate to ruin his weekend? The latter. Why are we dashing off to see him? Well, granted, he's not much to look at, but he is my chief of police. Yes, but why are we going to see him now? Because it's Saturday, and it's a perfect time to discuss a kidnapping. Uh, uh, Mrs. Fairborn doesn't want the police involved. I heard her, Sally. With these ears of mine, I heard her. It just so happens that these ears are attached to the commissioner of police. I know, darling. Very nicely, too. But they also belong to Emily's son-in-law, and that's who Mrs. Fairborn was confiding in. It's the kidnappers who don't want the police involved. Bank robbers and murderers feel exactly the same way. They think we're a real nuisance, too. It's just, Mac, that morally... No, I, I think I mean ethically. Oh, you know what I mean. Yeah, I know what you mean. You know what I mean? I know what you mean. <laughs> but Mrs. Fairborn wasn't talking to the police. She was talking to you, Stuart McMillan. Wrong again. She was talking to some guy named Mackenzie. You have a very unfair way of winning an argument. Thank you. Mac, you said it yourself. She was talking to a man named Mackenzie, so in a sense, you were wiretapping only without the wires. We'll argue the ethics of plain old wiretapping later. That is, you and Mr. Mackenzie can argue about it. And the commissar will be busy trying to earn his salary. No, I don't want to discuss it anymore. That's because you know I'm right? Sally. I should worry. I have a clear conscience. I can sleep at night. Uh... Wait here. Pardon me. Yes, sir. Did you happen to see Mr. Fairborn this morning? Yes, I believe it was around 9 or 9.30. And did he have his dog with him? Let's see, he checked his mailbox, then he went down to the garage to get his Jaguar, and as I remember, yes, he did have that thing with him. What thing? Uh, the dog, if you can call that thing a dog. Me, I got a German Shepherd home that eats more than that for breakfast. You can't call that scrounge little thing a dog. It's more like a pet rat, if you know what I mean. Mm. Now you take my German Shepherd. There's a dog that a man doesn't mind being seen in public with, if you get what I mean. Yeah, I believe I do. And his name is Duke. That's a very nice name. Yeah. That's what all his friends call John Wayne, you know, Duke. I've, I've heard that. Uh, what time is the mail delivery? About 9 or 10. But Duke, that's a name that a man isn't ashamed of now. Hey, Duke! Roll over, Duke! Move, Duke! Kill, Duke! If you get my drift. It would be well nigh impossible not to see what you mean or to get your drift. If you see what I mean. Thank you. Nice fellow. I think he gets what I mean. You're not healing. Oh, very funny. Where are we going? 
Yankel's houseboat. Mrs. Fairborn said Sally, that... I thought we had that all settled. I will not be party to a breach of ethics. Are you telling me you won't drive me to Yakel's? I will not drive the police commissioner to Yakel's. I will not be party to a... Okay, St. Sally of Assisi. I'll drive. would never do anything to jeopardize the victim's safety. It's a police policy to stay in the background until the victim is safe. Mac. I don't want to discuss it anymore. I know, darling, but I think that he would like to discuss something with you. He who? He, him, that's who. Oh. He says to go there, Mac. you missed the turnoff for the Indianapolis a couple of blocks back, fella. Is that so? Yeah, boy, the way you were zipping down that highway. Uh, you're the commissioner, aren't you? <laughs> sure is a nice day, isn't it? Very nice. A nice day for a drive. I mean, on a day like this, I guess anybody would just like to go Zipping along the highway. Was I speeding? Well, uh, we don't want to make a federal case out of it. Have a nice day, Commissioner. Officer. Uh, yes, sir. Aren't you going to write me up? Write you up? You're aware of my recent edict? Oh, yes. You mean uh, about no uh, favoritism uh, when it comes to uh, traffic violations? Yeah, that's the one. Oh, yes. I, I, I'm quite aware of it, sir. Uh, I read it uh, several times. Didn't you think I meant it? Oh, yes, sir. Uh, of course you did, sir. Well, then, write me up. Are you sure you won't have any afterthoughts? I mean, people do change their mind. No, I won't change my mind. It's human nature to change your mind. Officer, you were doing your duty. Oh, yes, sir. If you say so, sir. I'll put you down as, uh, as being very cooperative. Oh, thank you. My pleasure. Uh, uh, I mean, it's an honor. I mean, you're welcome. Uh, your license will be returned to you uh, at the hearing. That's a uh, part of, uh, of your new system. Yes, I, I remember. Well, see ya. Officer. Huh? Oh, the ticket. Thank you. I'm so proud of you, you stuck to your guns even when they were aimed at you. Without a license, you're not allowed to drive. And if you recall, I got your license. I'll drive, officer. You got a license, ma'am? Yes, officer. Fine. Well, I'll see you. I could take a cab. I'd rather you paid me than some strange cab driver. the meter while our cab is in motion. Hi, 
Hi, Commissioner. Hi. Hi, Mac. Sally. Hey, come on aboard and have a beer. Sorry, it's not a social visit. Oh, what's up? Francesca Fairborn, you heard of her? Oh, sure. Kidnapping. Her husband. They're demanding $100,000. The ransom note warned her not to call the police, and that's the way she wants to play it. Yeah, and that's the way the kidnappers want her to play it, too. Doesn't she realize the risk she's taking, not letting us in on it? Somebody's got to convince her that their lives at stake here. Sally, why don't you convince Francesca Fairborn? How can I convince her when I'm not convinced myself? What aren't you convinced of? That the police should be involved. Oh, Sally, this is a serious crime. It's just that Mrs. Fairborn wants to handle this herself, and it seems to me that... If Mrs. Fairborn wants to handle it herself, that lets the kidnappers free to kidnap someone else, or to take her money and not return her husband, or to just raise the ante. Does Mrs. Fairborn want to handle that? He's absolutely right. Well, he is. You know, Sally, your father taught me never to play high-stakes poker with a stranger. And I think the high stake here is a man's life. I'll talk to my mother. Maybe she'll swing more weight with Mrs. Fairborn. At a slugger. Why don't you do it now? Come on, Enright. You and me have to see a man about a dog. Yeah, well, there goes the weekend. Shopping or just looking, sir? The doorman said Fairborn drove a jag. This is his. Have it impounded. Yes, sir. What do you want? Mr. McMillan is here to see you. He says it's a police matter. This is Bolinsky. Dr. Carmichael's busy. So am I. Mr. Fairborn been in today? No, I don't believe so. Uh, the men are on the way to pick up Fairborn's car, sir, and I told them to check out everything completely. A real thorough check. You know, fingerprints, carpet stains, ashtrays, tire treads, glove compartment, the whole works. You know, these guys usually don't leave any <laughs> tight, sir, behind, but it never hurts to give a complete check. Like the commissioner has told me many times, you know, police work is merely gesundheit, sir, the putting together of a thousand little clues into one great big fact. In fact, I... Thank you, Sergeant. Uh, uh, Enright, uh, Sergeant. How do you do, Enright? You McMillan? I am Commissioner of Police. <coughs> well, I am Dr. Langston Carmichael. Whatever it is you have to say better be pretty important. I've got one sick bunny in there. As George Fairbody, a uh, Fairborn, but in here today. No, he hasn't. He was supposed to be. That is, the princess was supposed to come in for her checkup. <coughs> But they haven't arrived. Never even phoned to cancel. His car's at your parking lot. Oh, fascinating. Yes, it is. Now, if your curiosity is satisfied, we have work to do. <coughs> Mr. McMillan, we are here to cure illness, not to inflict it. Come, Bernie. We have a bunny to save. <coughs> well, it must be a nice business. What do you mean? Well, even if you lose the patient, you still have the makings of a good stew. <laughs> Sayonara. Hello. This is Dr. Carmichael. Yes. The police were just here. decided to cooperate. Well, I already ruled that decision. All these strangers milling about everything topsy-turvy. I only did it for dear Emily. <laughs> Have you raised a ransom? Yes. Well, nearly. My attorney, Rudolph Dimrose, is bringing by the final 20,000. Uh, the wiretaps already, sir. It uh, starts automatically. Oh, good. Now, what do we do next? We wait for the phone to ring. And then we let it ring twice. Then you must keep them talking as long as you can. Do you understand? Yes. But don't let them get suspicious. Play it cool. Certainly. Cool.
Yes. No, I... Oh, for heaven's sake. Lucille, really, I can't just... What? No. I didn't know. Oh, well, I really have no hope for that marriage in the first place, dear. Uh, Mrs. Fairborn. Uh, uh, dear, could you please call me back later? Ah, ciao. That is Lucille Shortle. She's the most horrible gossip in the whole world. Uh, my dear, you just should have seen what went on at Beirut's last. These two people, they absolutely were impossible. I never talk about that. Mrs. Fairborn, quickly. Well, I told her to call back later. Yes? Mrs. Fairborn? Yes. You got the money? No, I haven't raised the money yet. Did you call the well, police? It is Saturday after all, you know. I have not contacted the police. Please, how is my dark? Home. Did the voice sound familiar to you? It was a man's voice. I didn't recognize it. Why don't I make some coffee? I'm sure we could all use some. Come, show me where you keep everything. Uh, yes. Oh, I think it's beginning to hit her. Yes. Getting the note is one thing. It's impersonal. Like something you read about happening to someone else. And she thought she wanted to handle it herself. <laughs> I think it's hitting me too. Knowing there's somebody out there playing a cat and mouse game like that. Maybe we should take you home. Who are you? Rudolph Dimrose. I'm here to see Mrs. Fairborn. Rudolph! Francesca! Oh, how dear of you to come. Rudolph, I would like you to meet Mr. and Mrs. Carlton McKenzie. For you. So thoughtful. And the money, so difficult to raise on a Saturday. Made me nervous just carrying such an amount on my person. The streets have become a virtual jungle. A virtual jungle. Come on, Jane. It's time to go back to our treehouse. I'll take her home, and right? I'll be right back. Who does he think he is? Who does he think he is, making a remark like that about our city? What's his name? Dim? What's his name? Dim? Rose. Matt. Dim Rose. Get, Matt. In, get in the car, Sally. He called our city a virtual jump. I checked the other cities. He thinks he's been around all over the place. He doesn't know what he's talking about. Matt. Who does he think he is? You've forgotten. You've been grounded, Commissar. Oh. I feel so sorry for Mrs. Fairborn. It's yeah, so cruel yeah. somebody to taking off with somebody that. like that. She doesn't care a thing about her husband or anything. Mac. What? Look! It's that dog! The prince is in there. There's a man chasing her. No, Sally, go after the dog, not the man.
the dog you were chasing. Home, where she belongs. Mac? Oh, yeah. Mugged by a Pekingese. She's, she's a, a jolly, jolly good fellow. She's a jolly good fellow. She's a jolly good fellow. Which, which nobody, nobody can deny. deny. Which nobody can deny. Hi, Commissioner. Wait to get a load of this. She's a jolly good fellow. She's a jolly I suppose you know that Her Highness has returned. <laughs> what do you make of it, sir? Well, she must have escaped somehow. The fellow was chasing her, got away. I didn't get a good look at him. Which, Which nobody, nobody can deny. Mrs. Fairborn, answer the telephone. Oh, oh, which nobody can deny. <laughs> nobody can deny. <laughs> which nobody can deny. <laughs> yes. Mrs. Fairborn. This is Francesca Fairborn. $100,000? Yes, I have. Collected the entire amount. You'll get instruction. No. No, I wouldn't be the slightest bit interested in your instructions. The one I love is safe, thank heavens. Say something, darling. If you think that philandering fortune hunter you're holding is worth $100,000, I suggest you keep him. Ciao. You wish to handle this case? Well, your wish is granted. All that matters is the princess is back. That and getting her groomed in time for the dog show Sunday. <laughs> We were talking about a human being, your own husband. He was my indulgence. A momentary lapse in judgment on my part. Let's say a cream puff one allows oneself in the middle of an otherwise very, very strict diet. I'm certain that you understand, don't you, dear? I certainly do, Francesca. But your husband is in danger. Never fear. George is the kind of man who will die in bed. Shot to death by an irate husband, no doubt. <laughs> you were willing to pay $100,000 for this little pile of hair, but not for your own husband? This little piece of hair is worth 100000 George Fairhorn. Ah! <coughs> Gesundheit. Gesundheit. <coughs> Gesundheit, Mac. Mm. Dear Rudolph, please, would you keep the ransom money until Monday? I don't have a safe. I wouldn't sleep a wink knowing there was that much money in the apartment. Francesca, would it be awful of me not to? I don't have a safe at home either. And there have been so many burglaries in my area. We have a safe. Uh, 
Don't we, Mac? Yes. We have a say. I'll keep it until Bunty. Under the circumstances, this is indeed very kind of you, Mr. McKenzie. Big building. Oh. This belongs to you, I believe. Would you mind terribly keeping it for me, too? It isn't all mine, and I'd feel better if I knew it was safe. Until Monday morning, Mr. Fairborn. Thank you. Mr. McMillan. We'd appreciate a receipt. It is a hundred thousand dollars. And even police commissioners, after all, are only human and therefore subject to temptation. I know what you mean. Like right now, I'm really tempted to... Mac. ...give you a receipt. I presume the count is accurate. Mrs. Fairborn, won't you reconsider? The kidnappers might call back. This money could mean the difference. Now, however you feel about your husband, surely you wouldn't want to be responsible for his death. Well, perhaps I was a bit hasty. I just... We are exhausted. If I could just... If we could just lie down, we... All right, I'm going to the office. If they call back, call me right away, day or night, please. Please, will you excuse us? Come on, Sally. Good night, Mother. Good night, darling. You're closed. There is no air. Sure there is. You. Now, look, do me a favor, Ann. Help me make a lot of calls, will you? Right, Commissioner. I don't understand. That woman, how could your mother have such a friend? What does she mean, I'll have to think about it? What's there to think about? Doesn't she realize her husband could... Could be what? Could be killed, Mac? Of course he could be killed. Now, let's do everything we can. You know how to use a call director? No, but it doesn't look too complicated. Okay, then get me Enright, file room, or police garage. It's getting complicated. We'll find all the numbers in the Rolodex. Rolodex. Mac! What? Where's the Rolodex? Uh, under the typewriter table. When you get a number, buzz me. Mac! What? What's your number? It's in the Rolodex. Mac, you're impossible. That's possible. Are you getting me a number or not? Yes, I got you Enright. He, uh, I think. 2007. Hello, Enright. Hello. You disconnected me. Sally. 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 Yes? You disconnected me. I did. Why didn't you answer the buzzer? Nothing buzzed. Nothing buzz. It always buzzes. Why don't you sit here, and I'll go in there and try the buzzer, and we'll see whether or not it works or not, okay? Okay. This is a good way to find out. Are you buzzing me? Yes, dear. Okay, you win. Would you like me to get you in right now? Yes, please. What's his number? Five, five, three. I'll get it. Here's the file room. Sammy? Yes, of course I'm in the office. Now, I want an immediate rundown on Francesca Fairborn, George Fairborn, her husband, Rudolph Dimrose, her attorney, and Langston Carmichael, he's a veterinarian, and his assistant, uh, 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 something ski, uh, uh, Bel Bel Belinsky, Just Bernie please. Belinsky, right. Oh, he is, good, send him up. Enright's here, now get me the... Please, garage. Okay. Hello, 
Hey, you're getting good. Thank you. Uh, but not perfect. Oh. Who am I talking to? Oh, Jeffrey's good. This is Mac. By any remote chance, is there an M.O. on kidnappers who take dogs or raise dogs or use dogs or own Pekingeses or uh, Pekingai? Find out everything as soon as you can. I was working on the background checks when you called, sir. Here they are now. How you doing, Sergeant? Yeah. Names, addresses, birthplaces, birth dates. There's something strange about the ransom note, sir. It read, uh, we have the one you love. I would have written, we have your husband. Well, maybe they thought that she loved him. Oh, well, some women love their husbands. It's been known to happen. Do you think they could have known they were going to kidnap him at the dog kennel parking lot, sir? It's more than likely. It's a good choice. Saturday morning, the whole area is deserted. Yeah, well, then someone must have told them. I'll have to uh, run a check on all of Fairborn's friends. Right. Call me the minute you find anything. We'll be home all evening. Mildred. Mr. McMillan might receive an urgent telephone call in the middle of the night, so don't be frightened. We'll take it. Okay, if that's what you want it. Mac? Hmm? What do you think is going to happen to him now? We'd love to be run over by a car. Fairborn? No, Dim Rose. I'm talking about Fairborn. Oh, well, hard to say. You don't think they'll kill him, do you? Isn't that be awful? Mac, you've got to convince Mrs. Fairborn in the morning. How could somebody do such a thing to their own husband? Who did what to whose husband? It's nothing, Mildred. Oh, sure. And I was born yesterday. The Mrs. sits here like the guest of honor at a wake, talking about some grisly business, and the police commissioner tells me it's nothing. Don't stand on ceremony, Mildred. Pour yourself a drink and join us. Uh, no thanks. I already have one. Well, what is it, homicide? Kidnapping. Oh, yeah? I just finished a kidnapping. I prefer a good homicide. Mildred, how can you read those books? Don't they give you nightmares? No, but the newspapers do. All those unsolved crimes. Doesn't happen that way in my book. They always get the guilty party. No matter how clever they are, they always slip up. As Inspector Gerard always says... I love you. Oh. The criminal is a flawed individual. The problem is simply in discovering that flaw. Oh, there's too much for most in that. Inspector Gerard's a wonderful man. You'd like him. He lives all alone except for his faithful housekeeper, Agnes. Oh, he was married, but his wife was killed in the war. They were in the resistance together. I don't think there's anything going on between him and Agnes, but then you never know. I mean, they're both French, you know what I mean? Two, five. Mac, suppose Mrs. Fairborn won't change her mind. Ten. I think she will. Sixteen. I'm worried that the kidnappers 20, might not call back. Twenty-five. <laughs> oh, they have to. I hope you're right. Strange. What? You always take your left shoe off first. Were you aware of that? No, and I will not turn into a creature of habit. Habits aren't so bad. Like lying about one's push-ups. You've got a bunch of nifty ones I wouldn't change for the world. Oh. You've got some nifty habits, too. <laughs> Don't you think the kidnappers will try one more time to make a deal? I mean, maybe come down and prize. I would. Would what? Try again. I mean, they've gone to a lot of trouble to just take one no for an answer. Don't you agree? It's hard to say. Well, the first rule of salesmanship is never take no for an answer. Mrs. Fairborn. Don't touch anything. Mrs. Fairborn. Stay here, Sally. Mrs. Fairborn. What's happened? 
She's dead. She's dead. Oh, man. Uh, Sally, after the telephone. Why? If it's the kidnappers, tell them we have the money. We're ready to go through with the payoff. Okay, you ready? Yeah. Oh, hello? Mrs. Fairborn. No, this isn't Mrs. Fairborn. I'm a friend of hers, but don't hang up. I have the money. She, she's had a, uh, an accident, but she wants to ransom her husband. $100,000? $100,000, that's right. Get your instructions. Uh, when? We'll call you back. When will you call back? We'll call you back. No, I'll be here. I hung up. Nick, I'm so afraid. You did fine, honey. Sergeant Enright, please. What am I going to say when they call back? Just fine. Enright, Francesca Fairborn's been murdered. Get over here right away. Is it sound familiar to you? No, I don't think so. Did it sound like he was talking through a handkerchief or something? Uh, maybe. It's something about it. I can swear I heard that voice before. Oh, God bless you, Mac. It sounds like you're coming down with something. You've been sneezing like that for two days. No, no, I feel fine. I must be allergic to that dog. You're not allergic to me. <laughs> I just gotta be that dog. You're not allergic to dogs. Uh, no, I didn't. Must be that perfumey stuff the vet sprayed on. You think I sneeze here, you should hear how I sneeze in Carmichael's Oh, Wait a minute. Wait a minute. That voice on the telephone. Dr. Carmichael. No, 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 his assistant, a guy named, uh, 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 uh something, Ski, uh, uh Perlesky, uh, Berlinski, uh, 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 what was the name of the vet's assistant? Bernie Berlinski. Berlinski. Where is she? She's in the bedroom. Okay, fellas. Berlinski's about the same size as the guy I chased. Enright. Yes, Sally, could you stay here in case the kid never should call back? Of course. Okay, Enright and I have been out of visit, Carmichael. Okay, maybe I'll call Mother to come and sit with me. Good idea. It could be all right. Now stay out of that bedroom. Do you think they'll be open on Sundays? Of course. A sick bunny doesn't care what day it is. The question is, sir, why would anyone want to kill Mrs. Fairborn? It's a good question. Well, it could have been someone who wanted the $100,000, or it could have been the kidnappers. No, it couldn't have been the kidnappers. They called after she was dead. Well, then it must have been someone who was after the money. That's why that apartment was such a mess, sir. They didn't know you'd already taken it. Maybe. Maybe? That's not a very definite answer. No, but it's a definite maybe. What's going on here? He's dead. Oh, well, it looks like a I was going to ask you the same thing. <coughs> Did he have any enemies? <coughs> any friends? I knew little about his personal life. I can't believe he had any enemies. Well, he had one. Yeah. I see you've already heard. <laughs> the animals adored him. Animals, you know, have a sixth sense. Oh! Bugger bit me. It 
seems such a long time ago. Poor Francesca was ringing my bell. It seems years ago. And it was only yesterday morning. She had her faults, but she was a friend. Mother, you shouldn't dwell on it. How she loved that animal. I know. She was so proud. The ribbons, the trophies. You know what? I'm going to enter Anastasia in that dog show. Oh, Mother. It was so important to Francesca. For months, that's all she talked about. You don't know the first thing about dog shows. I know it's the Knob Hill Dog Show, and I know it's taking place tomorrow afternoon at Civic Hall. I assume that's all I have to know. After all, they won't be judging me. Lucky for Anastasia, you'd be best in show, hands down. Oh, what a daughter. All right, everybody freeze. Are you okay, Mrs. McMillan? I'm okay, here we go. Hello? It's him. Yes, I have the money. Well, no, I don't have it on me, but I can get it, though. Tomorrow. Where? The docks. Oh, no, I'm afraid that would be entirely unsuitable. The dog show. The dog show at Civic Hall, 2 o'clock. Take it or leave it. Yes, I'll have the money in a paper bag. What do I look like? What do I look like? Well, I'm a girl. Oh. Well, I'm about five feet, eight inches tall. I have long brown hair. Actually, it's not long. It's long in the back, but it's kind of shaggy in the front. I have that new cut. It looks kind of good. Question is, sir, was Belinsky... Was Belinsky killed because he was involved in the kidnapping of Mr. Fairborn or because he was involved with the murder of Mrs. Fairborn? The answer is probably yes to both. He was killed because he was involved in the kidnapping and knew about the murder. Yeah, Commissioner, your wife is on the phone. Near the judge's stand. Okay. Sally. Mac, that was just the kidnappers that called. They wanted me to deliver the money to the docks tomorrow. Good, it's isolated. Yakel will like that. He will? Makes it easy to maintain surveillance. Oh. Oh, what do you mean, oh? Oh, I mean, uh, I told you what he said. I didn't tell you what I said. Oh. I told him that I'd deliver it to the dog show. Oh. Well, you're not delivering it. We'll have a policewoman do it. Oh, no, I have to do it. You see, I described myself. I even told him about my picture in the paper. If some other woman shows up, he'll know it's a trap. It's got to be me. It's all that confusion, Sally, all those people. It's too dangerous. No. We can't just let Mr. Fairborn die. I really don't care what arrangements have been made. You have no right to use that money, Commissioner. I think I have. And I have every confidence that Mr. Fairborn would back me up in this matter. I am certain that he would, but speaking as executor of Mrs. Fairborn's estate, I can assure you that he's not one of the heirs and would be in no position to make restitution should the ransom not be recovered. When I last spoke with Mrs. Fairborn, she indicated a change of heart. I got the impression that she decided to ransom her husband. I disagree. But morally... I am not a priest, Mrs. McMillan. I'm a lawyer. And legally, I'm saying that your husband will be held responsible if anything should happen to that money. Are you prepared for that contingency? Tell me, if the kidnappers decide to kill Fairborn, are you prepared to accept the responsibility for his death? Come on, Sally. Don't be nervous. I won't. Just be cool. You've been under surveillance at all times. I know. And don't be scared. There's absolutely nothing to worry Man, about. Matt, what? if you tell me one more time there's nothing to worry about, I have a hunch I'm going to begin to uh, worry. It's uh, nearly 2 o'clock. Mrs. McMillan, now you be very, very careful. There's nothing to worry about. Thank you, Sergeant. Here I go. Thanks, Matt. She's quite a girl. 
She's got the moxie of a Marine. Yeah, but some legs on that Marine. Well, I mean, uh, even without the moxie, she'd still be quite a Marine. Girl. How's your bun? Oh, very well, thank you. I'm Shirley. Albert McTaggart, report to Silky Terrier, ring number two. What's the matter, sir? I think Carmichael uses dog spray for cologne. Look, I'm gonna go around that way again. phone call for you in the lobby. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. Margaret Wells, the last call for German Shepherd number 52.
What's going on here? We'll anyway? ask the questions here. Commissioner. What is it? That's our lunch. Fifi's in mine. Why were you running? Because you were chasing me. Oh. Why were you chasing me? Oh, uh, the bag. Uh, you it's... thought I swiped your lunch? Would you care for half? It's only tuna fish. Uh, no. Yes, yeah, thanks. What happened back there? Oh, well, it seems our friend came up with a very unique distraction. A couple of lady dogs in the mood for uh, love, you know what I mean? I is it all right if I go now? Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm very sorry. I hope you find your lunch. It's a good-natured fella. Yeah, considering you just mugged him. You know what? What? The human race neglects its real heroes, you know that? I'll buy that. Any hero in particular? Well, the man who invented the martini for one. Every park has a statue. Every statue of some guy sitting on a horse with his sword at his side. Where, oh where, is the statue of the man who first rode into battle, armed with only six parts gin and a squidge of vermouth? Here, here. <laughs> I'm with you. <laughs> I couldn't have said it better myself. I'll get it. Okay. Hello? Yes? Right. 20 minutes. What's the matter? It was Yako. Fairborn's turned up. Patrolman over at North Beach spotted him when he was grazed by a car. He thought he was drunk. He was staggering around, his clothes were a mess, and but when he questioned him, he found out it was Fairborn. How is he? Oh, he's all right. Cuts and bruises. Doctor says he was drugged, but he'll be okay by tonight or tomorrow. Was any help at all? According to the officer who found him, Fairborn wasn't very much help at all. He remembered parking his car at the vets, and that's it. Maybe when he wakes up, he'll remember some more. Yeah, that's a maybe, but there's one thing for sure. When he wakes up, somebody's got to tell him that his wife's been murdered. Who could... Who could do such a thing? We don't know yet. We'd like to ask you who do such a thing. I don't, I don't know. She could, she could be outrageous to it. It was just her way, but she never, she never hurt anyone. She, no one could hold a grudge against Francesca. Could, could it have been a robbery? Could it? Your apartment was ransacked. But until you check things over, we won't know if anything's missing. The doctor says I can go home. Later today, I'll, I'll Check things out and let you know. We'd appreciate that. Look, thanks for for coming here like this. I, I know it couldn't have been an easy thing for you to do. Thank you. How many times do you brush your hair? 100 strokes. Every night? Mm-hmm. OK. You have your habits, I have mine. Are you trying to gaslight me? What? Drop it already before I go bananas. What? The other shoe. Oh. What's on your mind? I don't know, something about habits. Oh, Mac, I really don't mean to make you self-conscious. No, no, it's not that. It's just something to do with this case, and I don't know what, and it's really gnawing at me. Why don't you sleep on it? It'll come to you in the morning. <laughs> Wait a minute. You sure know how to make a girl feel wanted. The ransom <clears throat> note. Francesca wouldn't let me take the ransom note on Saturday, and yet yesterday it was gone. 
Whoever ransacked the apartment took the note, left a lot of jewelry on Francesca, but took the note. Why? Maybe the kidnappers put his return address on the letter. Maybe he did. He did what? Well, not a return address necessarily, but some sort of giveaway. Maybe he was afraid that the police could trace the typewriter. It wasn't typed. It was put together with letters cut from a newspaper. I know it had an out-of-town postmark. It wasn't mailed. If it had been, Fairborn would have received his own ransom note when he checked the mail on Saturday morning. Then someone must have slipped it into Francesca's mailbox later that morning, or... Or what? Or... I don't know what. Yeah, this is about the right size. The right size for what? Why are you getting pressed? To conduct an experiment. Uh where are you going? With you. You know you can't get a cab at this time of night. A cab? Oh, you keep forgetting you've been grounded. <laughs> it's a habit. Oh, too late, Pavlov. Clues. We're at the clues. Doesn't fit. Oh, here, you could fold it. The envelope wasn't folded. That's the point. You need a key. George Fairborn has a key. Where's the phone? It's nothing important, Commissioner. You didn't disturb me. What? Yeah, I'm on my way. Oh, nobody makes house calls anymore. No one but cops and crooks. You see? No way. Fairborn wasn't checking the mail. He was delivering it. We'll go upstairs and get him. You better get Mrs. McMillan out of the way. Right. I'll take her home. I'll call you as soon as I yeah. know anything. Be careful, man.
flanking. Come on. I'm fine. The ransom money. Over here! You all right, mate? Yeah, fine. Get him out of here. Oh. I'll get the fire. Well, it all seems to be here, sir. Well, I guess it was Fairborn who killed Belensky, huh? Right, Commissioner? Yeah, they were probably partners in the deal, weren't they? Fairborn figured I might recognize Blinsky's voice on the phone. He killed him, right? Some guy to go into business with, huh? Yeah. Mac, now can we get back to what we were doing? Oh, you, you mean you were asleep too? Sergeant, you're so sweet. Well, I think I'll take my tuna fish sandwich back to the station. Good night. Now, you figured that Fairborn came back to steal a letter. And then he killed Francesca when she found him in the apartment, right? Right. Almost. He came back to steal the money and murder his wife deliberately. Saw the letter and realized his mistake. Yes, but when the police found him, he was drugged. Sedatives. Self-administered. You're amazing. Let's get something to eat. I've got an idea. Come here. <laughs> On a full stomach? Aren't you supposed to wait 15 minutes? That's swimming. Oh, okay. 